Hi, we're going to look a little more in depth at the average rate of change. So average rate of reaction. Um, as a reminder, we're looking at two points. Um, I have my reactant that's being consumed um, and I want to know from two points and I'm going to take from 40 seconds to 55 seconds. I want to know, well, what's the um, average rate that that changes? How many moles per liter per second are being consumed on average between those two points? So notice the straight line, that's the average part. Um, it actually, the graph is really bent just a little bit because it's an exponential decay, um, but that's okay. We're just gonna go between these two points and I'm finding the average. Um, so when you have a question that asks for average rate, this is where you live. It's between two points. Um, now, as a reminder, remember uh, the rate of re the reaction is just change of concentration over change of time. Another reminder, um, if we're talking about reactants, they're being consumed, so we put a negative number in front of them. Uh, so here is my actual equation. This is the reaction. We're going to have uh, this dinitrogen pentoxide is going to produce two moles of nitrogen dioxide and a half mole of the oxygen gas right there. Um, and I want to know, well, what is the average rate that the dinitrogen pentoxide is being consumed? So we're going to use this formula right here. Um, and because it is a reactant, it will be negative. So this is how I would write it down. Um, the average rate of this reaction is going to be the change of concentration of the N2O5 divided by the change of time, and it's a reactant, so it's going to be negative because it's being consumed. Now, if I were to break this out, the average, oops, the average rate is going to be the, um, con sorry, the concentration, oops, it's going to be the concentration of the N2O5 final, okay, the final amount minus, I'm going to put that in a big parenthesis, minus the concentration of N2O5 initial. So it's always final minus initial. That's change. That's change. Final minus initial. Final minus initial. Divided by the final time minus the initial time. So now I can just plug in my numbers. Look at my graph right here, get my data, and we can plug that in. Um, let's do that up here. Let's do this up here. So the average rate is going to be negative. Um, so the final, if I'm looking at 55 seconds, because this is the little section I want to look at, 40 seconds to 55 seconds, the final concentration is 1.1 molar. So this will be final, um, oops, 1.1 molar minus my initial concentration. So if I'm looking at the 40 seconds, that initial concentration for this little um, average rate is going to be 1.22, 1.22. Um, divided by the final time is my 55 seconds, 55 seconds, let's put my molarity there, minus my initial time of 40 seconds, 40 seconds. So we're going to get the minus and this would be a minus 0.12 divided by 15 uh, seconds, and that's molarity right there. So do the math and we get a 0 0.008. So the average rate is going to be 0 0.008, and then watch this, the units. It will be molarity per second. So what does that tell us? What does that tell us? That means if I'm going from this point to this point, and I go from second 40 to 41, in that second, 0 0.008 moles of the reactant, the N2O5, have been consumed. If I look between, let's say, seconds 49 and 50, in that one second, on average, 0 0.008 moles per liter have been consumed of the reactant of the N2O5. So it's telling us on average for every second, all those 15 seconds from 40 to 55, on average 0 0.008 moles are being, uh, moles per liter are being consumed. Nice. Okay, now something slick, something really cool is knowing the average rate of one species in a chemical reaction, we can find the rate of everything else. 
here it is. There's a relationship between the rates of every species in a chemical reaction. Here it is. It's going to be that rate of change. Um, so uh, the rate of change of concentration over time, you simply take the coefficient and reciprocate it, and you can set them all equal to each other. So here it is. Um, here's how I can relate these three species. Again, you take the coefficient, reciprocate it. So I'm going to do the rate of change as a reaction um, for each of the species. I would have change of concentration of N2O5 divided by change of time. Now this is a reactant being consumed, so I put a negative in front of it. The coefficient's one, so it's still just going to be one over one. That doesn't change. Now the rate at which this is, con is consumed equals the rates that these are being formed when I reciprocate their coefficients. So this right here is going to be one half, I take that two and I reciprocate it, one half, and it will be the change of concentration of the nitrogen dioxide divided by the change of time. Cool. So you just take the coefficient, re reciprocate it. Um, the rate at which this is consumed, the N2O5, equals one half the rate in which the NO2 is being produced. And that equals, okay, O2 is also being produced. Notice this was a positive. That's being produced. This will be a positive. Oxygen is also being produced. So I reciprocate, let's flip that coefficient, two times the change of concentration of O2 divided by the change of time. So we have this relationship between all three species. Again, you set their um, change of concentration over change of time. You set their rates equal to each other. Make sure you have the correct sign. So this is being consumed. These are being produced, so they're positive. And then the easy trick, simply take the coefficient and flip it. Now, the power of this. Um, I know the rate for my N2O5. Well, knowing that number, we can figure out the rates of the NO2 being produced and the O2 being produced. Um, so we are going to do 0.008 molar per second is going to equal one half of the change of concentration of NO2 divided by change of time. So if I want to know, let's solve for that. If I want to know this rate, the rate in which the NO2 is being produced, all I have to do is solve for it. Let's multiply both sides by two. So we will get 0 0.016 molar per second equals the change of concentration of NO2 divided by the change of time. Very cool, very cool. Um, so we got this number. I'm gonna write these in purple so you can see these up above. So we got this one is 0 0.008 molar per second. And notice we had already taken care of the negative. That's why I left this as a, a positive. Remember, we always write rates as a positive. Always write those rates as a positive. Um, so I had already taken care of the negative up here with this math. Um, let's see here. And uh, we would say that this um, N205 is being consumed and the NO2 is being produced. Let's see, and this one came out to be 0 0.016 molar per second. Let's go ahead and calculate the oxygen. Let's do the last one. Okay, so our oxygen, and I'm sure you've probably already done it in your head. Um, again, we're going to have this value, the point, point zero zero 0.008 molar per second is going to equal two times the change of concentration of O2 divided by the change of time. So if I want to know the rate in which oxygen is being produced, let's just solve for it. I'm going to multiply both sides by one half. Um, so the twos will cancel. And now the concentration um, of O2 being produced for every second is going to be one half times 0 0.008. That answer will be 0 0.004 molar per second. So again, knowing the rate of the reaction uh, for any one species, you can figure out the rates um, of any other reactant or product just by taking the change of concentration divided by time and put the reciprocal of the coefficient in front of it.
then you just have a really, really simple algebra problem like this one, and you can solve. Nice. So the um, N2O5 is being consumed 0 0.008 molar per second. Um, likewise, the NO2 is being consumed on average, okay, on average for every second is producing 0 0.016 molar per second, and the O2 on average is being produced at 0 0.004 molar per second. There we have it, nice. So two big takeaways from this video. Number one, to find average rate, you just do final concentration minus initial concentration divided by final time minus the um, initial time. And you can graphically look at that, or a problem might just give you all four numbers. Second really big takeaway, once you know the um, concentration of any one species inside of a chemical equation, set those rates of each species equal to each other with the coefficient reciprocated, and then you can find the rate of everything else, um, the average rate of anything else in that reaction. Okay, nice. Um, and I want to say an extension. If you are given the instantaneous rate, um, so this point, that's going to be the calculus. You could also use this. You know the rate of anything. You could find the rate of, um, by doing the reciprocal of the coefficient, you can find the rate of any other species. That could be for average or instantaneous. Um, okay, very good. If you have more questions on rate, look at the rate playlist. Okay, have a nice day. Thanks.